Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Mm, Kate so was missing in action today, so I thought I'll quickly walk through some of the things which have been sitting on my mind, which I thought I'll share with you when it comes to key metrics you should look at when you're analyzing a company and you're thinking about investing. A lot of you have been asking this, so I thought in today's video I'll briefly walk through five of these things which you should look at and uh, and why they are important and as a value investor something which you can use to filter out before you deep dive into the company we always first need to filter whatever is there like using a sieve when we are what do you call clearing the flour for before baking or the sand before we decide to mix cement or concrete we use a sieve same kind of concept is this so we have a set filter and we put the data through that filter and then we land up with whatever we land at the bottom after going through the filter we say okay this is things which are worthwhile looking at so basically these are stocks which you can look at this five metrics you can use across all industries and all sectors it is not industry specific or a sector specific but the numbers which these metrics give you could be sector specific or industry specific so keep that in mind the metrics themselves are not of any specificity they can be applied across all of them but the data which it gives the way the data is interpreted can be specific to sectors and industries i will not get into that today today i'll just walk through the five uh, analytics you can maybe another day i will get into sector specificity on each of these and talk about how each one can be looked at into each specific sector such as banking or steel or agriculture or it and so on but do keep in mind just because through these filters and the numbers look good it doesn't mean it's immediately a buy all it tells you is financially the numbers look interesting and from here on you have to really look at the promoters and look at the shareholdings and try and read uh, news about this company going back at least 4 to 5 years companies which are younger than 4 to 5 years i would not recommend as a new investor i would not say you should look at it and you should try and avoid it if you are a new investor companies which are very new because when the company is very new there is more fog in the data and news and it's very hard for a nascent investor to look at that and say ah oh, there's something fishy here we usually tend to go with our biases and we'll say ah oh, okay it looks all right and we'll tend to bite before we think and we might bite into something which is not really good for us so as we forage in the forest of companies keep that in mind if you don't have a person who knows what the lay of the land is it is better if you're alone to be cautious and take your time and stay within your competence okay that said the first one which we have to look at something known as debt to equity ratio the formula for debt to equity is total liabilities the company has divided by the shareholders equity so total liabilities is current pa you know non current everything put together you can pull this out in any financial statement of a company if you go to screena it is there if you go to any company's own personal website or bse or nse their balance sheet is there and you will find it there someone like uh, philip fisher whose book which i want to review for you guys chapter by chapter which i'm planning to do which i'm working through and putting it together that script down so i can walk through that book chapter by chapter and tell you his uh, philosophy and why it's such a brilliant philosophy he believes in doing the groundwork yourself philip fisher uh, common stocks and uncommon profits so he believes in doing the research yourself he says that way you know the data and you tend to avoid noise you tend to avoid distractions and not get swayed by anybody else's opinion is if you do the investigation yourself so this is the main reason why i'm talking about the balance sheet So if you go pull out the company's balance sheet and you see the numbers which are been published you can sit and do these calculations and the reason why I also suggest you do that is one you will know the numbers for yourself you will not be relying on someone else feeding you the information so you will not be influenced by someone and two it builds confidence it's like doing maths the more additions you do the more proficient it becomes second nature so you don't have to do every time calculation 1 plus 1 is 2 you know it is 2 
So when you see it, you know it's true. So that kind of understanding you will learn. Please keep in mind, this information which I'm sharing with you is for people who really want to learn how to analyze companies. This is not, this is not required to make wealth. It is not required to invest. Okay, so immediately you don't have to see this video and think, uh, oh my God, and be overwhelmed saying, I have to do all this to invest. I have to do all this to make money and become wealthy. No, you don't have to. <laughs> there are other ways to becoming wealthy and it's not so complicated. This is purely for people who want to learn and who want to deep dive, who want to try and become another Anand Srinivasan. Like I put up in a tweet, what d differentiates you from Anand Srinivasan is that he has spent time doing it. Remember, every expert was a beginner at some point of time. So if you want to become an expert in the subject matter, all this preventing you from becoming an expert or like Anand Srinivasan is the amount of time you're willing to spend. Anand has spent his lifetime doing this, so he's become an expert. You can decide if you would like to become an expert like that. You can also dedicate a portion of your time or your life into this and you can become an expert. So coming back, debt to equity ratio or DE is the total liability is divided by the shareholders equity. A lower ratio suggests that more financially stable company generally is preferred for value investors. That means the total liabilities divided by the shareholders equity, if that ratio is low, okay, then it's looks as a good because a simple reason logically thinking the amount of debt the company has is much lower than the equity the lower that means the number is low that is now all of you immediately start asking me what is a loan ratio but do some homework and each of us have our own idea of depending on our risk appetite we have a number which we think is low so if you ask anand he'll want no debt he'll say zero debt so you decide what should be the ratio which is acceptable for you? What is your tolerance? What do you feel? So you suggest. My suggestion is try and keep it as low as possible. Zero debt is the best. Of course, zero debt is not possible. There are companies do require debt because debt is required for any form of growth. So I do understand that. So keep that in mind. A low ratio is, means the company is financially stable. Nothing more doesn't mean the business they're doing is good. It doesn't mean they're making profit. It doesn't mean anything else other than the fact they're financially stable. If the loans all have to be paid today, they have the money to pay it. That's all. Keep that in mind. Second thing which I want to talk about is called current ratio. Current ratio is nothing but current assets divided by current liabilities. So these are assets for one year. These are assets for uh, loans for uh, one year. Within one year, their money is coming to the company or within one year the company has to pay it those are the current so this cut ratio is above one the company has enough assets to cover short-term liabilities which is a good sign it means the company is liquid so current assets for the year and current liabilities for the year that ratio if it's above one the company has enough cash if it suddenly is jammed up in one year cycle it can clear its debt not a problem which is a good thing and it's logical the assets divided by the denominator, which is the liabilities, is above one. That means it's got more assets than liabilities, which is a good thing. So as a value investor, that's another box you can tick and say, great. So that's something to celebrate. Third thing is called the quick ratio or the asset test ratio. 